Every year, people spend £23 billion pounds on buying clothes in the UK. Many made from cotton. Growing cotton means using highly poisonous pesticides for cotton farmers. Each year, 220,000 farmers die as a result of pesticide poisoning, and over a million more are made ill through using pesticides. Conventional cotton kills thousands of people every year, and by using organic cotton, I can make clothes without having blood on my hands. Well, we can't allow our clothing to kill the people who grow the fibre that goes into it. And that is the situation at the moment. One alternative is to use organic cotton, where no chemical pesticides have been used. Cotton is grown all over the world, from Brazil to West Africa. Highly toxic pesticides like organophosphates and organochlorines are used to produce cotton. These pesticides have been banned in Europe and America. But in Benin, in West Africa, they are commonly used in growing cotton. The organochlorine compounds can have effects particularly on uh, the fetus and the infant when they're developing because we collect them in our body and then pass them on. Organophosphorus compounds, they were developed um, after the Second World War. They're based on nerve gases. People who get exposed to those when they're applying them can become very ill or die. These pesticides um, used at lower dosage over a number of exposures over many days or weeks can lead to general symptoms of nausea, headache, um, lassitude, weakness, and then at higher doses you can get more acute effects with problems with breathing um, and uh, even coma and, um, and, and problems of, with consciousness. The pesticides have a devastating effect on cotton farmers, many of whom are afraid to talk openly about the problem. The symptoms I feel after each treatment is burning of the arms, digestive troubles, and dizziness for 48 to 72 hours. It's so bad that if we weren't dependent on cotton as a cash crop, we'd all stop growing cotton. After treatment, we usually buy concentrated milk, and we drink that, sometimes three tins to make me feel better. Ernest is a vegetable farmer and has stopped growing cotton because of health problems brought on by the use of pesticides. After my father died, I took over farming and was farming quite a lot of cotton. After treatment, I used to get itching and then one year developed a bad rash which spread over my body and began to seek liquid. One day I went out hunting with my neighbours and around midday had a dizzy spell and actually fainted. They took me to a local health centre. I didn't know where I was till I woke up in the evening. I'm really anti-cotton as a result of my experiences. There are commonly reported and diagnosed symptoms which include dizziness as well as bronchitis and breathing problems. But there are other symptoms which we don't have the knowledge or training to deal with, like reproductive health, sexual dysfunction and other more chronic long-term effects. Even worse are the incidents of malnutrition. We can't say for sure that there is a direct link between malnutrition and pesticides, but what we do observe is that many, many cases of malnutrition come from cotton growing areas, more than come from other agricultural areas. These are very serious cases where one in three victims die. Many farmers actually die. In this hospital in the first six months of 2004, there were two deaths and 34 cases of pesticide poisoning. The World Health Organization has recorded 200,000 suicides and 20,000 accidental deaths a year. 
In one cotton growing area of Benin, a study confirmed that there were 61 deaths between 1999 and 2001. This may only be the tip of the iceberg. Others have to continue to live with the long-term effects of pesticides. And not only is their health affected, but also their income. The farmers have to pay for the cost of treatment and the cost of medicine to the full cost. They're not subsidized by the government or by social security. And for farmers, in extreme cases, that can be 50% or more of a farmer's income in a year, particularly if family members have also been affected. Pesticide companies should really look at the products they are making and start making them less toxic, because if you sit down and do a detailed costing, I lose a lot of money because of the impact on my health, and they should be responsible for public health and develop products that don't harm people. I think we have to acknowledge that they are toxic substances and that people who are using them have to be protected. And that requires training, requires use of sophisticated protective equipment. Um, and, and unless those things are in place, then it, it's dangerous to use these chemicals. They, they can damage your health or they can kill you. Farmers cannot afford to buy the protective equipment needed to spray the pesticide. And even if they could, this equipment is unsuitable to be used in the tropics, where it is frequently 40 degrees with very high humidity. Buying the pesticides is also expensive and increasing in price. Economically, there are huge problems from the cost of importing pesticides into, into West Africa. In Benin, the balance of payments deficits is around 60%. A large amount of that um, that has trebled in recent years is pesticides, which contributes. So they're importing expensive technology while not earning significantly more, in fact often less, from their exports of cotton fibre. So I think overall the picture in West Africa is that production has increased by a factor of five in recent years, but actual income earned from cotton is half what it was a few years ago.